In the mouth. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flare Mouse. We have another unusual shotgun slug from the country of France. Salut Jeff, ici c'est la France. Et la balle Wonder. Voilà, trois munitions françaises. And that of course is David, I think I pronounced that right this time, from France, who went way out of his way and sent us these amazing shotgun slugs from France. So what he did, he took brand new shells, cut them apart, and sent us just the internal components. And I definitely appreciate this opportunity to test these slugs out. There is no way we could have found these slugs in the United States. And what I had to do was just load these into American shells, and this is what they look like. And yeah, these are some weird designs. They're very complicated. They're a lead antimony mixture, making them a little harder than normal soft lead. But what's unusual, you have a hole going through the center, then you have these four chambers also going through the center. And a lot of people believe that that it causes some kind of internal airflow to stabilize the slug. And then it has this kind of fluted base pedestal thing on the bottom. It's, this is a weird one, folks. Since a slug has a shock wave at the nose of the slug, this prevents airflow going through the slug. And then directly behind the slug, you have a low pressure, almost a vacuum, in the wake of the slug. Now in similar slug tests, we found that the nitro card actually is sucked to the back of the slug, thus preventing airflow. And then once the slug reaches subsonic speed, the card will just fall off on its own. Now these are loaded into a pretty normal looking, like a, a birdshot shot cup. And that is also acting like a Sabo. Okay, our first target is this soaking wet stack of magazines. It's a new target, let's see how it works. All right, welcome and bonjour to the Tau Flader Mouse channel, where today we will be testing out the uh, Wonder Bullet straight from France. Wonder S. We wonder what it'll do. Look at that crazy shape in there. All right, here we go. Shooting. Okay, as you can see, the slug is tumbling around, and then right before it hits, it goes nose first and enters the stack of magazine exactly where Greg was aiming. Now looking at the magazine stack, you can see that I'm sticking my knife in there. It's in there about, oh, maybe five or six inches. And then if we turn the stack over, we can actually see where the slug basically ended up and the uh, deformation of the magazines. Kind of a neat target, I think. Okay, we cut the stack open and we start finding little bits and pieces of the slug. There's the tail end that I uh, marked with a, uh, a paint marker and then we find a bunch of little tiny pieces of shattered lead so that thing basically just blew up once it hit that soft wet target Aim so. okay. okay anytime you're ready all right here we go dead center dead center Now it wasn't looking good in the first shot because the slug tumbled around. This time it looked like it was flying nose first the way it was supposed to be. And we had no idea that the first one was actually tumbling until I got home and started reviewing the footage. Now this was filmed at about 4500 frames per second with the Kronos high speed camera. And you can really see how much energy dump is going into that ballistic gel. Okay, let's have a look at the gel pylons. The first one has a very large core cut out of the front and on the back you can see that the slug actually started breaking into multiple pieces. So we're definitely understanding the reason why the slug is designed like it is. It's designed to just fragment and break apart into small pieces when it hits uh, flesh through hydrostatic shock. And just so you know, this is gel block number three. The block is just littered with fragments of lead like a hand grenade went off. Pretty impressive. Pretty cool.
Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go, in the mouth. Oh, Jesus <laughs> <Christ>. <laughs> in the mouth. <laughs> and way back in there is the, uh, you can see the wad sitting back here. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. And you can see his massive exit hole right into his clay brain. Oh, look, there's some, I don't know what that is. <laughs> little bits of uh, French lead there. But, having passed through the little containment box, not much left of that thing. Well, I got little shards of. So they, yeah, there's a lot of little lead shards in here. Very interesting. So those things are just designed to just kind of blow up inside of a wild boar or something. Yeah, just like it. No did. Pen, no over penetration. Just like it did with the gel. It. Uh, yeah. They just kind of went mags. Wow. And once again, we had no malfunction. Slug flew straight and true. Hit where he wanted and just create a huge cavity inside this block of clay. And a lot of people have told us that they really enjoy us shooting that clay block, so thank you for your feedback. Okay, hit it. Yeah, the first shot must have just been a fluke. I have no explanation why the first one tumbled like that, but as you can see, this one Again, flew nice, straight, and accurately. It kind of looks like a dog paw print. Yeah, I haven't seen that before. And then you found a little, there's some of that yellow paint. If you guys can see that on camera, but it's got uh, four distinct little, almost like four marbles hit it, all lined up next to each other. That was a good test. Yeah, it's kind of cool. That's a different uh, impact than we've ever seen. Yeah. A little bulge coming out of the back. Here we go. Oh! I say that hit. Yeah. You suck at shooting. Yeah. You can't hit anything. <laughs> Here we go. Oh! I say that hit. Uh, so <laughs> you punched it, but look how that Kevlar made it through Homer's bucket. Oh. You get it out of there? My wife's gonna be mad. I, I, I messed up her car washing bucket. And up in there. You, and, you, and you aimed a little high, didn't you? I was aiming for this spot, so they were dead on accurate. Okay, uh, and it is in the center. I thought they were gonna drop, so I aimed high. I aimed right here, so it didn't have any drop at 51 yards. Wow. But look at that thing. Let me get a close up of that. That's the best piece of French lead we found. And of course, since it hit Kevlar, it doesn't expand like it would through flesh. But, wow, that's something else there. Now it's one thing to shoot at something 10 and 20 yards away or so. Uh, that doesn't really tell you how it does in the real world. So we started doing these 50 yard tests and people seem to enjoy that. Now it should be noted that Greg was shooting through a rifle choke. It was kind of a mistake that we left it on there, but as you can see, it didn't seem to really affect the performance, accuracy, or anything like that. And that, folks, is another shotgun slug you've probably never heard of and will probably never see for sale in the United States, unfortunately. Thank you again, David, for sending these slugs. He also sent, I believe, three other types of French slugs to us that we'll be testing in the near future, so stay tuned for that. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this rare opportunity to test out a French slug called the Ball Wonder S I, or Wonder Bullet. Thanks again for watching and be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Good day.